Welcome back to CertAffairs.I've been married to Stephanie for almost 20 years now, and if I had to put my life on the line, I'd bet she understood me so well that she could pick me out of a crowd of men, even if she was blindfolded. We had a sort of ESP when it came to each other. Each of us always knew what the other was thinking, and we always seemed to sense when the other was around. I work as a traveling salesman and was usually on the road two weeks out of every three. Steph worked as a secretary for a manufacturing firm and has done so since our two children were old enough to go to school. Because of my profession and the many separations it caused, Steph and I had a fantastic personal life. She was always so happy to see me home, and I was always so happy to be around that we never reached the point in our marriage where sex became hokey. It didn't hurt that Steph loved sex and always wanted to experiment and try new things. She would pick up a Cosmopolitan magazine and read an article about 10 ways to pleasure her man, and if any of those ways included sex, she just had to try it. She picked up a copy of the Kama Sutra a couple years ago, and we are still trying out different positions. She said we'll still be working on the poses when we turn 80. Then a series of events occurred that would undoubtedly change my marriage and my life. I was on day four of a seven-day trip to the Northeast when I got a call from my boss telling me I had to rush home. Our head office had just announced the purchase of our largest competitor, and I had to be present for the reallocation of trade territories. That meant I would be home for Steph's company Christmas party, which I would have otherwise missed. I was about to grab the phone to tell her the good news, but at the last second, I decided to just surprise her, just five hours before my boss called. I had been working with a client demonstrating a new line of adhesives. One of the tubes burst under pressure, and some of the glue got on my hair and beard. No solvents, paint thinners, microacetone could clean it off, so I did the only thing I could do. I shaved off my beard and cut my hair. When my boss called me and I realized I could make it to stay his party. I decided to have a little fun with it. Steph had never seen me without a beard and had never seen me with long 70s hippie tile hair, although I had shortened it a bit as I got older. When she and I met, I had a beard and never shaved it off. I decided to make a few more changes, show up at her party, wait until I catch her under the mistletoe, and then kiss her passionately. She wouldn't know who I was until our lips met, and no one in attendance would guess it was me either. I smiled, imagining the rumors that would fly when her co-workers saw her passion with a strange man. I went to the men's store and bought a new suit and tie so I could be dressed in clothes Steph had never seen before. I went to the drug store and bought a pair of weak reading glasses and then packed up and headed to the airport. When my plane arrived, I went to the office and spent the day working with Harry on a remodeling plan. At 530, I headed home confident that Steph, following her usual habit of taking a change of clothes to work with her, would go to the party from work. She would also get a hotel room for the night so she wouldn't drive home, drunk. I backed up and called home when I was two blocks away, but there was no answer, just in case. I drove by the house looking for signs of life and parked on a nearby street. Back at the house. I looked in the window on the side of the garage, but her car wasn't there, so I went back and got my car and pulled into the garage. I showered, shaved, put on new clothes, weak glasses, and as I looked at myself in the mirror, I wondered how long it would take Steph to recognize me, given what we had at ESP. I half expected her to recognize me. As soon as I walked through the door, I hoped she wouldn't. I wanted to get her under the mistletoe before she fell. The party was being held in one of the banquet rooms at the Marriott Hotel, and the buffet dinner was ready for me. When I arrived, I spotted Steph at a table near the area that would later be used as the dance floor. She was sitting with three other girls, and while it could have just been my imagination, I thought I saw her look up for a second when I walked in had she really sensed my presence at this distance. She cast a quick glance around but then went back to talking to her friends. I noticed an empty table in the far corner, so I grabbed a drink from the open bar, walked over to it, and sat down. It would be at least an hour before the dancing started, and I could have my little surprise. I was watching. Steph and sipping a vodka tonic when the first challenge of the evening happened. Two guys headed towards my table and I looked around to see that the empty chairs at my table were the only empty ones in the room. I knew both men we'd met at previous picnics and company parties, but would they recognize me? Mind, if we join you, you seem to have the only seats in the house. I waved at the available seats, and they sat down and introduced themselves. I lowered my voice to disguise it a bit and gave my real name. 
Tom asked what company I worked for, but before I could think of a lie, I was in for my first surprise of the evening. Steph got up to go to the ladies' room and my jaw dropped. Her blouse was cut so low that her breasts were almost completely exposed. She was wearing the shortest skirt I had ever seen and she was wearing CFM shoes with five-inch heels. She looked like a street prostitute scoping out clients. Larry noticed where I was looking. She's something. Isn't she Tom picked up? Looks like someone's going to get lucky tonight. What does that mean? Her husband is out of town, on business, and sometimes when he's not around, she plays judging by the way she's dressed today. This is just one of those times. What do you mean by saying? She plays that's the thing with Stevie, you never know she likes to be inventive, and it's rarely the same thing twice. Suddenly I wasn't interested in surprising my wife. It seemed like it was up to her to surprise. This year they used a DJ and records instead of a live band, and I watched almost every guy dance with Steph at least once. After about an hour of dancing I saw a guy hold something out to Steph and then watch her secure it in her hair. It was a large sprig of mistletoe. He led her out onto the dance floor and then they kissed. It wasn't just a peck on the cheek. It was a long, hot, passionate kiss and I watched as the guy's hands went down to Steph's ass and pulled her to him. Then the guy started to cut in and the kisses stayed hot and passionate and there wasn't a part of Steph's body that wasn't being pawed and Steph did nothing. Not a single move to fight them off. Tom and Larry got up to dance with her and Tom was just about to dance with her when the DJ announced a short break and Tom headed back to our table with Steph in tow. I braced myself for a confrontation, but when we were introduced she only threw me a cheerful look and said do I know you? In a disguised voice, I replied that I hadn't. That's odd. I feel like I know you. I just shrugged, stood up, and went to get another serving. When I got back to the table, Steph and Tom were kissing and Larry ran his hand up her skirt. Tom and Steph broke the kiss when I sat down and Steph turned to me and said, are you sure we've never met absolutely? At that moment, the DJ played the music again and Steph looked at me and said, are you going to ask me to dance? Sorry, I don't dance. I have bad knees. Too bad, she said, and leaned toward me. I wouldn't want you to be the only one who didn't kiss me under the mistletoe. She kissed me and her tongue penetrated my mouth. I waited a second and then returned the favor. Now she'll know, I thought, but when she pulled away, she only gave me a strange look and then Larry pulled her back to the dance floor. For the next hour. I watched Steph do almost everything on the dance floor, except actual sex. She kept glancing at me, and at any minute I expected a light bulb to go off in her head. As the party started to wind down, Steph left the dance floor and came over to my table. We're going to move the party upstairs to room 921. You're invited, knocked three times and left. I was torn between going up to my room and going home to wait for her but curiosity won out and after a few cups of coffee at the hotel's 24-hour cafe, I headed to room 921. I knocked three times and the door was opened by Larry. Come in and get a room. The door closed behind me and all my attention was on what was happening on the bed. Tom walked over to me. I told you she was something. Didn't I? If I was her old man, there's no way in hell. I'd go and leave her alone. I just stood there and watched Steph having fun. Things started to quiet down and the guys got dressed and started to leave. Steph looked back at me and noticed that I was still standing there, fully dressed. She frowned and then made a gesture with her hand. Come here, mystery man. I know I know you from somewhere and I think I'd like to get to know you better. She rolled over onto her back, spread her legs and arms and said, Come on, honey. I just stood there looking at her for a few seconds and then shook my head and said in my usual voice, No thanks. Pooh my nickname for her. I don't think so. I saw her recognize me, and then there was a startled expression on her face as I turned and left the room to go home and wait. 